G'day, I'm Jake from Firepants Fab. We are doing this little video today to show you how to assemble our new grinder, which is the Scorpion right behind me here. This is, um, it's been quite a few months in development. We're really with, happy with how it's turned out. It uh, ticks a lot of boxes and I think it's going to be a great new addition to anyone's little workshop. Uh, we will be I will try and follow these instructions I wrote um, as close as possible so it all kind of makes a little bit sense you can watch this and follow through it's a pretty straightforward assembly um, shouldn't take much more than 20 or 30 minutes uh, depending on how keen you are to get started on grinding of course let me know uh, contact me if you get stuck with any of the steps or something's not clear something's not working or um, if you think you're some of the parts aren't quite right. Best to contact me before anything gets damaged. And uh, enjoy the assembly and more so enjoy using your Scorpion. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we are going to be putting out some... Uh, we'll be putting out some more videos soon with some tips on how to use and get the most out of your grinder. Uh, maybe a few comparison videos as well. We're going to try out a few different belts and a few other exciting things in the near future. So subscribe, stay tuned, and we'll see you again soon. First thing you want to do when you are putting together your Scorpion is to unpack all the parts and lay them out in some sort of a logical fashion so you can get to them easily. Check over everything, make sure it's not nothing's damaged or uh, something's happened in transport. But there shouldn't be any concerns about that, so just basically make sure it's all there and um, yeah, familiarise yourself with all the parts. Um, I've got all the bolts laid out behind me here, I've got the motor and I've got my tools as well. So naturally you can use whatever you like to put it together, but this is the simplest sort of kit that I have been using and it's been working very well so far. So just got to... 13 millimeter socket on a little bar. I've got a six millimeter Allen key. One's with a ball end is um, very useful for one particular step. Um, it's not essential, but it's nice. Uh, two spanners, a 16 and an 18 millimeter. Pretty straightforward. I use a combination square that's got a small spirit level on it. Uh, it's not going to be accurate to microns, but it's going to be close enough to get this set up right. And I do recommend using a torque wrench. You only need a small one, only something that does between 15 and 30 foot-pound. I only need something small. This is 3.8 drive. It'll do the job. and keep it simple we're gonna follow these instructions pretty close um, at least get all the steps in the same order um, of course it's not the only way to do it but it's it works so first thing we're gonna do is get the motor set up and into position so to do that make a bit of space This one's the two horsepower fixed speed motor. Um, has this type of switch with it, which is a DOL starter. Um, the three horsepower fixed speed looks almost identical, but slightly longer. Um, and the variable speed two horsepower option has a has the smaller box on top and has a large variable speed drive instead of this. So what you have might look slightly different, but it's just a different option for the same thing. So as you've received it, it would be all wired up. This is of course if you did order the motor, order the motor with yours. Um, we are doing a frame only option, which includes everything but this setup here. So if you ordered that, don't expect to get one of these. Um, the first thing that we need to do is move the feet. 
So we flip it upside down. Use your 13 millimeter socket. Just to undo the feet on the bolts. And they will come off just like that. There might be a bit of paint sticking them together, but that's normal. Slide your bolts out. There was a bit of paint stuck in that one. That's okay. So, ugh. rotate it so that the data plate for the motor is facing up. So you slide the bolts into the slots facing upwards and put the foot back on. Use the nuts and washers that came with it. The bolts just slide into those slots. If your feet have two holes on one side, those two holes go towards the fan side of the motor, the back of it. Slide them over like so. Make sure that's seated, locked in. And that was 15 foot pound on these. One thing you'll notice is some of these have a slightly larger um, bolt holding the fan guard on and they tend to only use they tend to mix it around what they actually use um, if it's got a tall one just get a screwdriver and swap it for a, a short one or they only actually need three most of the motors only even come with three of them so We'll just swap that before we do the next step. Okay. Now we need to find this plate. It's kind of shaped like uh, that. Um, the, where the two little corners are taken off, that goes towards the shaft side. And.
We need the four countersunk uh, M10 by 35 uh, bolts. And they just slip into the countersunk holes that line up with the holes in the motor feet. Uh, I've got a few extra mounting holes in these. Um, so now's about the time when you want to be um, making sure this plate fits on your pedestal using any of the other holes or drill your own. Um, if you are using the middle ones you'll need a countersink on the other side because that does run pretty close to flat against the motor. If you're using the pedestals that we will be getting in, um, or the ones from Hare and Forbes, they line up perfectly with the top of the plate there. Right, for now, drop your bolts in. And then they each have, of course, a nut and a washer that goes on top of the foot, which is underneath now. Get them all started while it's loose. Might as well mention with this step is because of the limited room to get in there, um, you can almost guarantee that these will become M8 by 35 bolts. Um, in which case you'll need a 13 millimeter spanner instead. Uh, but for now, this is what we've got. Um, yeah, so once they're all tight, we can flip it back over. and we're ready to put the frame on. So for this step, we need the frame, we need four M8 by 25 bolts, and four of the large washers. Uh, these ones are about 22 mil outside diameter. That's a regular uh, M8 washer there. Um, so quite simply, these slotted holes line up with these on the motor, and there's a small spigot that goes inside this hole. We'll mount this up, there we go, with the uh, studs for the gas strut facing the body of the motor. Before we go too far, um, just mention that if you're, uh, if you've already got a space or a pedestal where you're going to put this, now is a good time to actually mount this, mount your motor on the pedestal, and we'll just build it up from there but because I'm working on a bench um, I'm just going to build it up here and use a block of wood when we go to put the drive wheel on because this one's not getting mounted anywhere in my shed unfortunately so 
pop that up. Oops. Just hold it with one hand while you get a bolt in, or have someone hold it for you. Just two opposite bolts for now. So this front edge is cut straight. So spirit level or square up against it. And so if you if your bench or your pedestal is not completely level, um, this just gives you a bit of freedom to move back and forth. Uh, So we can Beautiful. just to get it close because close is nice, and these should be twenty foot pound. Yep. All right, next step is going to be the platen. Um, in this case, it's a ceramic platen. So flip it over. There's two holes in the back. One's got a long gap, one's got a small gap. Uh, the long gap usually goes down to the bottom, but you can flip them upside down if you want more height. Um, it actually doesn't matter, but we'll set this up with the gap at the bottom. So, two brackets, we've got two M10 by 16 millimeter long bolts, make sure they're the short ones because if you put long ones you'll just break the glass, um, they're the shortest one in the pack. Washers on them. They are a slotted hole, but just get them roughly centre. We will adjust them later. Sixteen mil spanner just to nip them up so they don't move. M12 by twenty millimeter bolts and washers on them as well. So they go in the two threaded holes up against the front. Um, yeah. Just set them up roughly in the middle of their slot as well. 
just nip them up because we will adjust them later too. Working from the other side now. We've got the tool arm and the work rest, which has its mount welded underneath already. M12 by 30 mil bolt. bolt comes in from the outside like so just nip that up lightly then this is probably the most difficult step it's not even that bad, it's just fiddly. These need to screw into these two threaded holes at the bottom. However, because there's a motor there, they won't. So what we do is using a 6mm Allen key, if we pull them back, we can actually use the Allen key in the back. We can push that through and turn it that way. You can see that. So we can push it through and turn that. So with the big chunky washer on the back. So once that thread starts, you can just hold the handle back and wind it in. Make it look hard there, but don't go all the way in because we still need to slide the tool arm in there. Same process. Just started on its own and then we pull it out, wind it in. Now we can slide our tool arm, tool arm through. Helps if we keep that up. And tighten them up the rest of the way. You don't have to do that every time you go to use it, of course. Simply, you get a quarter of a turn to loosen it or lock it off. And if you do want to adjust the angle, you simply pull it out, turn it, and it will lock back into a different position. So... Find that keeps it just out of the way. Right, now the fun part. Actual fun, not fun like that. Two M8 by 25 bolts and washers. One M8 by 20 socket head cap screw with the Allen key head and a washer and a tracking adjuster bolt. We also need the tensioner handle and our gas strut. So we've got the gas strut, we've got a hinge assembly, we've got two M8 by 25 bolts, we've got one M8 by 20 socket head cap screw, all with washers, uh, we've got a, a uh, tensioner handle and we've got a tracking adjuster bolt as well. So, the two M8 by 25 bolts go into your handle like so. Pop them through. On the back of the hinge, you'll see there's two bolts. 
uh, on the back of the hinge you'll see there's two threads they line up with those bolts we just put in and we'll just do them up Then we can put in a adjuster bolt. We've got a nut on them. That's just in case we don't need to lock them off in use to stop it from winding in or out. Um, but I haven't had to so far, so that's a, that's a good thing. Wind that in until it starts to contact the back of the hinge. So that changes the angle on our drive wheel. Now we can tighten them. Okay. Gas strut with the, the the rod end of it down, just so it doesn't collect dust and damage the seal. That just pops on. Just give it a good push. Until you hear it click. And oh yeah. Got the tensioner. Next, we've got the tracking wheel. Um, careful you don't drop these wheels. They are expensive and they will dent, but they won't break. It'll just it'll just be cosmetic. All right. Now this does have a spacer. You won't be able to see that, but when you've got yours. There's a spacer that sits between the bearings. If that's sitting down, um, we'll just need to use something like a Allen key. Just pop it in from the other side to lift it up. And that will slide. Just over our axle, like that. Then we'll use a, a M8 by 20 socket head cap screw. and lock it off. Make sure the bearing spins nice and freely. This one does. I'd be surprised if it doesn't, but if you have already mounted this where uh, off the edge of a bench or on a pedestal, uh, you won't have this problem, but because I'm doing this on the bench and it's not mounted to anything, uh, I'm just gonna use a block of wood under the motor so I can fit the drive wheel on. Be aware that at this point they are getting a bit unstable and top heavy, so it's a good idea to put a clamp um, on the back of it somewhere. Now, okay. pull off the protective cover, make sure the hole in the back of the drive wheel is nice and clean, and it even helps just to put a little bit of spray on there. Now, these should be a firm fit, but they shouldn't be tight and they shouldn't take they shouldn't take excessive force to push them on. At most it should just take a few taps with a very soft rubber hammer. Uh, if it takes any more than that, then there's probably a small burr or something on the shaft 
uh, if it doesn't fit on smoothly, um, then we need to investigate further where the issue is. So lining up your keyhole with the key. That just took a bit of jiggling to get it actually lined up and square and started. Once I did it slid right on. A couple of taps with a very soft rubber hammer is okay but you don't want to be forcing it on with anything. Uh, if that does happen um, then we need to look for any damage on the shaft. Usually it'll be the motor shaft will just have a little nick or a burr on the end and a bit of emery will take care of that. If there's a problem in the drive wheel um, it gets a little bit harder but yeah we can best just to contact us before proceeding if you get stuck with the fitting that wheel um, and then it's just a well, what's that m8 by pretty long m8 by 40 bolt through the middle through into your motor shaft and lock that off and we're almost there. Right, now this next step we're going to need to run it. So I've actually clamped it down to my bench. Um, this shouldn't be done until it's actually mounted securely in its final position. So grab the belts, preferably the ones supplied with your grinder. Uh, it's easier if we just remove the um, work rest for this step. So to install the belt, just hang it over the top, pull down on the arm, and slip it under the drive wheel. Then just rotating it by hand, check the tracking, and Adjust it till it runs nice and central like that. Be careful not to get your fingers caught in the belt. It hurts. So. Now that that's running central, top and bottom, it may be slightly to one side than the other, as long as it's consistent. Um, uh, uh, get it as even as possible on both of them. There is plenty of width on the belt, you just don't want the belt hanging off the wheel. So, If they're nice and consistent, we can... grab our 16mm spanner, loosen off those two bolts that hold the platen sideways, and just adjust that so that the edge of the platen is in line with the belt. No need to go crazy on them, just firm, tight, just enough they won't come loose. And now we'll just adjust these two bolts at the back here to bring the platen just slightly into the belt. If we put our square against it like this, there's it, it's actually too far behind. So we want the platen to be pushing into the belt by about just one or two millimetres, that's all we need.
to lock them off once again. Okay. Last adjustment to make. Slide your work table back in. Tighten up both the bolts on the back to hold it in position. And we'll set that up so it's nice and square to the platter. That's way off, say 18mm spanner. There we go, nice and firm. There we go, now that the grinder's ready to run, all we need to do is mount your VSD or your starter uh, somewhere secure and convenient and start using it. Uh, I'm just gonna talk about two extra little features we've got for the Scorpion. Um, there's a guard that we're putting over the top wheel uh, which will be quite a nice little feature and a we've put some holes in for a light mount and I'm gonna show you how to set up a light that you can buy from Ikea to bolt straight onto this so two good things I'm gonna run through it fairly briefly um, but they're a fairly straightforward setup now anyone that's already got one uh, I can send out a template with the um, I was sending out a template with the guard, which is here. So this guard sits up over the top. It just needs one hole drilled. Hmm. This is nicely. Just needs one hole drilled in the tracking arm uh, and one bolt to go through there. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, now I've already drilled the hole in this. Um, I'm good like that. Uh, future models will have the hole already in there to suit the guard anyway, so um, yeah, there's no worries about that step for most people. So, to get this started, we will just pop the belt off. Six mil Allen key. Pull that off, slide that off. Bolt with the washer, through the hole, through the guard, another washer, and a nylock nut. Good view on my armpit there. 16 and a 17. Now there'll be a bit of personal preference when setting this up. I'd like to have a little bit of friction on it, but just firm enough that you can move it by hand so you can move it out of the way, but it still slots back there right in place. It'll sit all the way forward against the handle stop, which kind of gets in the way of your hand, which prompts you to then move this back so you can get your whole hand on the grabby handle thingy. And it is as easy as that. Remember just to lift up that bearing spacer. It takes a little jiggle. Pop that bolt back in.
Tighten him up. And there is a guard. Beautiful. There you So the guard sits. The guard sits nicely out the way when you're changing the belt. Heaps of room. And you can move it right out of the way if you something long or whatever. Slides back down into place. And this is sitting on a high bench and it's way too high for me as it is. But that will block all that crap coming back and hitting me in the face. That will be nice. Alright. Now, lights. These lights. We can see what that is. Turtail. Turtail. Whatever it is, that word. That's that's the light that I've been using. It's nice and cheap. I'm able to supply them as well if you're not near an IKEA. But. It will save you a little bit if you do go direct. Obviously follow their instructions for setting them up. Probably know how I feel about instructions so far. These are the same lights that I use on my table at knife shows, so I've put a few together already. So, I've just grabbed four M6 bolts at 25 mil long, four washers and four of these magical, I get out of the frame, uh, flange nuts. Now the holes in this, those mounting holes, They're just a little bit too small for them six bolts. So I'm just going to run a six mil drill bit through them and they will be very happy. Right, and with a 10 millimeter socket and spanner, um, we'll just tighten them up. I've had to change it to a nylon nut instead of a nylon nut instead of a flange nut because the flange nut won't fit.
Alright, lights in, grab a globe, use an LED one, they look nice, they don't use much power, and that's an Edison screw, American style thingy. Anyway, find some power, and ding, that's nice. So there we have a light, move it around, not much that way, but bring it right down there if you want. And we have the nice little guard too. Great. Oh, hope you like those extra little bits. Um, always new little features, little ways we can make them work a little bit better. Um, and of course, we try and make them as backwards compatible as possible. So the guard, even if yours didn't come with one, uh, that's it's one holder drill. It's shouldn't be too much of a drama. So these mounting holes for the light. Uh, yeah, light from Ikea or buy one from me. If you buy one from me, I'll give you the screws with it. But there, nothing special anyway. Uh, all I had to do was to get enough clearance. I just um, took the spring mount off the chassis side and just snipped off that little ear which doesn't seem to affect us too much or at all it's worth it yeah please don't forget if you've had any troubles or issues uh, getting it together or using it or anything like that please contact me um, nobody knows these things like I do and I'm sure that there's going to be something that I've missed in these instructions or whatever. So it might be a simple fix, just get on to me. Best way is by email. I'm usually in the shed and I can't hear my phone ring. So um, an email, any pictures or videos of any of, of what you're talking about speeds things up, of course. Um, but let me know if you've got any issues and we will get it sorted out. Good luck, enjoy, and have fun making stuff with your scorpion.